Yo, yo, yo. What's up, everybody? Today is Sunday, August 18th, going over my best plays in Major League Baseball. Two and two yesterday, another juice out, but we will hopefully get off that train today. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Buster Bookie Show. What we do here, we give you our expert predictions along with the opportunity for a $40 giveaway. If you would like to qualify, all that you need to do, number one, Subscribe to the channel. Number two, comment below for no. Give us the good vibes. And number three, like the video. If you do all that and we sweep, I will cash app somebody 40 bucks. As I mentioned, another two and two day. We've been on a streak on of two and two days, and I feel like today's the day to get off of it. Let's talk about our four plays for today. The first one is a parlay. I believe this is my personal first parlay on the show in baseball. And I love the situation. Let's dig into it. The first part of the parlay, we're going to talk about Shota Imanaga. And we're looking at his walk line of 1.5. First, let's talk about Mr. Imanaga in this game. We're talking about the Blue Jays, 57 and 66, going against the Cubs, who are 61 and 63. The game time is 120 Central Time. On the year, Imanaga, 9 and 2 record, 3.16 ERA, 1.08 whip, and 131 strikeouts. But as I mentioned, we're talking about his walk line. Only 19 walks and 128.1 innings pitched. That's very good. When you talk about Imanaga, you know, I, you know, this is obviously a juicy line, but that is why we are combining it with another play here. But especially at home, he's been under this a ton. He's under this 13 out of 13 home games and 19 out of 22 overall. He has an elite 3% walk rate, which ranks in the 97th percentile. He's going against a Toronto team that ranks just slightly above league average in their walk rate versus left-handed pitching at 9.3%. So there's just nothing that really scares me uh, in regard to this. Imanaga has been great at not walking guys, especially at home. So that's the first part of this parlay. What we're going to do is combine this with the Houston Astros money line. Now, if you just took this by itself, it's like minus 380, minus 400. That would be a tough, juicy play. But when you combine these two, I got them at minus 110. I love it. Chicago White Sox, 30 and 94 on the year, taking on the Houston Astros, who are 66 and 56. The Astros are going against Kyle Bush. He has an 0 and 1 record, 5.19 ERA, 2.31 whip, five strikeouts, 8.2 innings pitched on the year. This is a very uh, you know, this is a guy that just has not played a whole lot, and his numbers are not very good, does not have much to show for on the year. On the other side, we're talking about one of the best pitchers, at least for the Astros, in Framber Valdez. 12-5 and record, 3.38 ERA, 1.17 whip, and 122 strikeouts. I mean, you've got arguably their best pitcher going against the White Sox, one of the worst teams in the league. And, you know, they have... It's just a great situation. Obviously, they're heavily favored here for a reason. Um, you know, Fran Beer is going against the White Sox lineup that ranks dead last offensively against left-handed pitching. The White Sox have lost 27 out of their last 30 games. We just need Houston to win the game here. So that'll be our parlay. We're taking Imanaga under one and a half walks combined with the Houston Astros money line as our first play of the day. Right around minus 110 juice, basically even money, lock it in. All right, play number two. I'm giving you guys uh, three kind of different type of plays than what I typically do, but uh, I think these are all good value. We're going to talk about a batter prop here. And the game that we're talking about is going to be in the uh, Texas Rangers game. And we're looking specifically at Mr. Corey Seager. On the year, Seager, 271 average, 26 home runs, 63 RBIs, and 846 OPS. And we are looking at his HRR. We are taking the over 1.5. I locked this in at minus 130. Now, over the last, uh, you know, that's his career or that's his season averages. But if you look more specifically over the last 20 games, he's batting even better. 280 with 23 hits, 7 home runs, 14 RBIs. But what I really like here is the matchup that he's got here. It's not, it's a short, uh, you know, time frame. He doesn't have a ton of history against this pitcher. But Pablo Lopez versus Seager. 
This is what we're taking advantage of here. Seager is four for six with three home runs in his two matchups against Pablo. Yeah, it's not a huge sample size, but we got to love the history that we've seen out of him. He's been batting better in general over the last 20 games. He had three at-bats, two hits, two home runs. The other game, three at-bats, two hits, one home run. And like I said, four RBIs also in those two games. So I love the matchup here. I think Seager's been batting well. And we're definitely going to take advantage of this matchup here versus Mr. Lopez. So give us over 1.5 HRR for Mr. Seager as our second play of the day. All right, play number three. We are going to stay on this game. We're looking at this matchup like we talked about. Minnesota Twins, 70 and 53, going against the Rangers. We already got one play with Mr. Seager, and I'm going to give you guys another one. The Rangers 56 and 68 on the year. This game's at 135 Central Time. And we're digging into the righty, Mr. Pablo Lopez. 11 and 8 record, 4.67 ERA, 149 strikeouts, and a 1.15 whip. And we are looking at his walks. On the year, his walks 29 walks and 135 innings pitched. And a 1.5 line, I locked this in at minus 125. We are taking the under here. Now, he's under one and a half walks in 19 out of 24 of his last 24 games and one for one versus Texas this season. I know it's not much, but we got to love what he's done over the last 24. And he has one walk in his last 11 innings pitched. He just went, went six innings versus Kansas City. Guess how many walks he gave there? Zero. Even better, I looked deeper into this one. He only had two separate three ball counts. So I love what I'm seeing from that angle. Going against a Texas team who ranks 26th in walk rate versus right-handed pitching over their last 25 and 24th in walk rate versus right-handed pitching over the last 10. Texas has accumulated two total walks in their last 21 innings, including zero walks in nine innings in their game versus Minnesota with Festa on the mound, who had a lot higher strikeout rate when you compare that to Mr. Lopez. Lopez ranks in the top five percentage in first pitch strikes, and Texas ranks in the top third in chase percentage over their last 20 games. So you take those two together, the fact that Lopez is going to get a lot of first pitch strikes going into the team that's going to be swinging a lot, we should get some good counts for him. He should not be in situations where he has a ton of three ball counts and has to get that you know, walk. So I love this situation. It's not very juicy for us. Give us Lopez under one and a half walks as our third play of the day. And our fourth and final play now, this game is pretty early. We're looking at the Cleveland Guardians, 72 and 51, taking on the Milwaukee Brewers, who are 71 and 52, 110 Central Time. And we are looking at Ben Lively. The righty is 10 and 7 on the year, 3.71 ERA, 1.21 whip. 93 strikeouts, and we're going to stay with this walk trend. I know we've got basically three of them today. One of them's with a parlay, but we are looking at his walks. 38 walks in 114 innings pitched this year, and this time we are taking the over. Over one and a half walks. I locked this in at minus 125. Now, he has hit this in 12 out of his last 21. That's decent, but he's averaging 1.8 walks in that span. The Brewers are ranked 5th in walk rate and 6th in walk rate when you look at their last 15 days. Lively has been walking batters more frequently, and now he's going against a heavy walk team. The Brewers are playing very solid in general, and I think they're really looking to capitalize on guys that are a little bit not in the zone as much. You look at this projected lineup, and they just have a handful of guys right around that 9 10% percentage, even a little bit higher as far as their walk rate goes. Here's a few of them. Mitchell, 12.9%. Adams, 10.8%. Bowers, 11.1%. Hoskins, 9.6%. Ortiz on the bottom. I wish he was a little higher in the lineup, but he's at 12.2%. Really, only Chario at 6.1% is the you know only guy that doesn't walk a whole lot. So we've got a ton of walk candidates here. Lively, like I said, has been over this 12 out of 21 and it's not very juicy. I love it. Give us over one and a half walks for Mr. Lively as our fourth and final play of the day. All right, here's a recap on all four of our plays. The first one is a parlay. We're taking Imanaga under one and a half walks, combining that with the Astros' money line. Play number two, we're looking at Seager 
over 1.5 HRR. Play number three, we're taking under one and a half walks for Lopez. And then play number four, we're taking over one and a half walks for Mr. Lively. As our four plays for today. Don't forget to set your notifications so you guys can catch all the videos when they come out. We do got our show with Spindoc that should probably be posted by the time you see this video. If you'd like to qualify for the giveaway on this show, don't forget all you need to do. Number one, subscribe. Number two, comment for no. Give us the good vibes. I don't want any negative vibes. I know we've gone two and two again. We're going to get a bounce back. And number three, like the video. You do all that and we sweep all cash up. Somebody 40 bucks. Our motto on the show is to bust your bookie. We did go two and two yesterday. Let's get the sweep today.